The status of the girl, child and women in India has been subject to many great changes over the past few millennia. The high status that women enjoyed in India prevalent in India and the early marriage affected the growth and development of the children. Child widows were condemned to a life of great agony and were shunned by society. Infanticide was common as a girl was considered a burden by parents. Thus began the practice of killing the girl child once she was born. She would be snatched away from the mother's arms. And dropped into a pot of boiling milk. Continuing abuse of the dowry tradition. Unimaginable atrocities. Unrestricted use of violence. All born by the women of those times, silently and tearfully, with no opposition. Such was the status of women that they were pledged in gambling and degraded and demeaned in public.
Hindu widows were compelled to climb onto the funeral pyres of their husbands and commit sati, as it was believed that by burning herself on the funeral pyre, a widow sanctified her ancestors and removed the sins of her husband. The status of widows in India was deplorable. As for education, educating the girl child, and that too in English. It was unheard of. You have always seen him standing there for years as you've passed by, sparing a fleeting glance at him. Yes, he is the Khara Parsi. But do you know who he is and how he came to be here? Meet Kursatji Manakji Shroff, the youngest son of Manakji Dorabji Shroff, a scion of the Dadi Burjor family of Surat a man from the 18th century. At the age of 13, he was assistant to the chief officer in charge of the business of the East India Company in Bombay. Over time, he prospered in business and was highly respected both by the British and his own community. Are you still staring at me? Wait, let me tell you a story. It takes a considerable leap of imagination for a woman of the 21st century to realize what her life would have been 
150 years ago. We take for granted nowadays that a woman can have a career if she applies herself. We take for granted that a woman can choose whether or not to get married, whether or not to have children, and how many. But women in the mid-19th century had no such choices. Most of them lived in a state little better than slavery. They had to obey men, because in most of the cases, men held all the resources, and women had no independent means of subsistence. Nor could she follow a profession, since they were all closed for women. Girls received less education than boys, were barred from universities, and could only obtain low-paid jobs. Women's sole purpose was to marry and reproduce. Women were indoctrinated from birth to accept their lowly status, and yet many did rebel. In 1808 was born a young man who grew up with the vision to change things around him. This young man was unhappy with the treatment meted out to women and wanted a better life for them. This young man was the first Indian Freemason who, more than 125 years ago, displayed the courage and zeal to have the portals of the sacred citadel of Freemasonry thrown open to Indians. He was the first Indian member of the Royal Asiatic Society of England, honorary commissioner in the Court of Requests, judge of Bombay's Small Causes Court. He was the first Indian to be appointed assistant collector of customs, twice sheriff of Bombay. This is the man you should honor, my son, Manikji Kursichi. The year was 1837. <laughs>